Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about is magic pay to win and I posted recently a thousand dollar standard deck. A lot of you have questions about that deck. That deck is a tier one deck. It's not a deck someone just made. So it was expensive. That is a deck that has topped its Esper control. Got, uh, it looks like it had uh, a play set of each of the blue fetches, a play set of wooded foothills, a play, no, I, six wooded foothills last Bloodstained Mirror, so a total of 14 fetch lands, four Jaces, four Gideons, and I'm probably forgetting a few other valuable cards. Now, that deck is an actual deck. It is actually played, and it is the worst investment you can ever make, in my opinion. So, is Magic paid to win? Absolutely. And the reason is not because the deck is bad. The deck is very good. That deck I would play all day over my Abzan deck because I think it's, low, it's a, a lot more fun. And I don't really want to play Abzan anymore because I've been playing it for like the last 10 months. But that deck is one of the most fun decks to play and most expensive decks to play. And here you have a scenario where it's going to rotate really fast. Uh, what's rotating out? The fetch lands. So the 14 fetch lands are going to be gone. And typically when a mana base is gone, the deck itself changes drastically. I mean, you can't say, oh, well, okay, we still have the Gideons, we still have the Jaces, we still have the Dragon Lord. Oh, that's the other one, Dragon Lord. And we still have all these other pieces, but our land is not as good. That might not be able to support tricolor. Remember, fetch lands are a very big part of why everyone's tricolor are... Dark Jeskai, four colors, or even five colors. Some decks are five colors. They splash. Because those fetch lands can catch pretty much any combination that you want because of the battle lands. Now, that's the biggest point I have to say is when the lands change, the decks change, right? You can't be as greedy anymore. The lands right now allow you to be extremely greedy. So even something like Esper, just removing the lands, that might be enough. That might just be enough. And the rotation is happening pretty soon. So Oaf is January 19th. So I'm guessing the next set is four months after that. So it will be like January, February, March, April, May. So it will be May. And then once May hits, that entire, you know, Khan to Tarkir is gone. And Fate Reforged. So yeah, it also has Ugin. So that will be gone as well. So all these Festlands are gone. And you might be like, oh, well, Festlands are a good investment, aren't they? I don't know. They're too high right now. They are too high. And you have to assume some of the price of that these Fetch lands are not based on modern. It's got to be some of the price or, you know, I would say 60% of the price of these Fetch lands is due to them being in standard at this time. Uh, when I mean 60%, I mean if they rotate out of standard, let's say a Delta is... 25 bucks right now. I don't know what it is. Is it 20 bucks? I know it's dropped down a little bit, but at the height it was 25 bucks. That card is does not deserve to be $25. No matter how awesome it is and no matter how many people know it's good and modern, it probably deserves to be a $15 card. And so it's highly impacted by the standard decks currently we see. And once it rotates out, I see it as a $15 card. And maybe it is, maybe it's a little higher, maybe it's $18 because people really want, people are collecting a mass amount of them. But if you look at these shock lands and you look at what happened to them, they were the highest amount of money in standard. They were, I mean, they were $15, $17, $18. I know uh, when the Selesnia decks were the number one decks, that card was $15. For a Temple Garden, Temple Garden is not $15 right now. So a lot of people are saying, oh, well, you know, let's buy the Fetch Lands, let's buy the Fetch Lands, that's a good plan. Um, I don't mind trading into them. I don't know if you want to put cash into them. Actually, I would advise against that. Magic is pay to win. Uh, the, the best decks have Fetch Lands. Do your Fetch Lands cost money? Yes, they do. Do Planeswalkers cost money? Do Gideons cost money? Yes, they do. Do Raptors cost money? Yes, they do. So when you look at the top decks, even the mono red or the red deck wins version, the mo most optimized version that people are playing on the Pro Tour, Otaka Red, those have Otaka's commands. I think they're about $10, $12 a piece. This is not your typical red deck wins where you know you, you have a $10 to $12 rare. And it also has the... Um, the dude, 
that comes in play, and then he's kind of like snappy, but not really not a good snapcaster. And then you reveal the top card of your library, and you can play it. That card's like eight bucks, I think, six to eight dollars. Exquisite Fire is expensive. I mean, you look at you look at standard, and I have to say, like all the decks, I'm used to being like relatively um, cheaper because of Fetch Lands, because that you can play multiple colors. This is an issue, and Magic has become pay to win. I mean, I don't. A lot of you will say, "Oh, what about this budget deck? What about that budget?" Sometimes it will win, but if you play a hundred games against Esper Control with your fifty dollar budget deck, Esper Control is going to win more than fifty of those games. Like with the same quality of same pilot, the same quality of play, because it just has better cards. So when Matt. For people who are saying Magic is not pay to win, like, I don't know where you're getting that from. Because although you can make a rogue deck, it can win sometimes, take it to your Pro Tour. See if it wins there. The last rogue deck I've seen that has done good is Aristocrats. And Aristocrats, that was not the cheapest deck. Like, you got, you still have your Planeswalkers, you still have your Fetchlands, you still have everything that makes a deck in standard expensive right now. I know. Um, I wish Magic was cheaper. I wish um, people could play the decks they want to play. And I wish people could, you know, like, I don't know. I don't want to play people with bad decks. I don't, I don't want to play people with decks that are not optimized to their liking. Because I feel like it takes away from the game. Just because they can't afford those cards. And I play a lot of crappy decks and I have a lot more fun playing a crappy deck against another kind of non-optimized deck than I do playing Absin. Absin is extremely painful for me to play but I win like crazy because I've been playing it for the last eight months and the deck list is still the deck list and still one of the best. I mean Absin is not cheap but compared to Esper Control it's cheaper. I think my Absin is like $600, $700. I mean it's running Gideon's, it's running um, it's running Fetch Lands. Yeah, my new one's running Fetch Lands, so it got a little more pricey. It's running Den Protectors. It's running... Um, what else is pricey? Shambling Vents is not really that much, but... Uh, what else is it running that's so pricey? It's running a lot of uh, semi-pricey cards. Oh, Dromokix Command, not really. Windswept, yeah. Wind Fetch Lands, yeah, mainly Fetch Lands and Planeswalkers. Those are the two that will always get you. Fetch lands, plane walkers, den protectors. I think that's where most of the money is. Anyway, bye guys.